Hi and welcome to Easy Fishing. This is part two of beginners fishing with a whip on the canal. Uh, being to my technical inability I managed to successfully delete the last one I shot and this is the third time of reshooting it. So uh, hopefully this time the camera battery won't go flat and nor will a microphone. So we're going to start off by putting in uh, three small balls, no, probably two small balls of ground bait about the size of a walnut. And I'm just going to throw them out to the area where I've plumbed up uh, using the pole tip as a marker. So here we go. Swing the rig out to mark where you've plumbed up. Try and get them as accurately as possible. Followed up by a pinch of maggots, no more than half a dozen. I'm going to start off with a single red maggot. Uh, let's hope it works. I have some. These are getting a bit old, like the last slot in the first one, but we shall see. Anyway, single red maggot, and out we go. Oh, and here comes a big barge. First put in a small gudgeon. When you put a maggot on the hook, just nick it through the fat end where if you squeeze it very gently, you'll see a small flap of skin. Just nick the maggot through there so it wriggles enticingly. And this is a big canal boat. This is very wide. This is not a narrow boat. See if I can get one more before the boat arrives. Fish are used to the boats. And yes, another gudgeon. So at least the uh, I've caught something. I like to rebate every time. I don't do it every time, but I like to because I think once the fish has had the maggot in its mouth, it's probably uh, damaged it slightly. I and mean, sometimes they actually squash them flat and suck the insides out and that's without the float going under. That's a fair sized boat. Yeah, takes a bit of getting used to it. Will it fit through all the locks? Only up to a Birmingham. <laughs> Don't plan on going that far to this way, Dad. So now the boat's gone past, flick it out again, draw it back to the baited area, half a dozen maggots. Now that boat has left a trail of churned up mud, fortunately on the other side of the canal he was trying to be uh, considerate, which is nice. Unfortunately not every boater is. Now, a lot of people have wondered why I would come to a canal for beginners. Well, I sincerely believe, and it's been proved to me many times over the years, 
the canal is a very good place to learn the art of fishing on. One, in most canals, there's usually quite plentiful fish stocks. Not in every canal and not in every area, but generally speaking, there's a lot of fish. Uh, oh, I had a bite then, missed it. Um, they're usually cheap, uh, easy to access. Um, some of them are very cheaply available fishing. A lot of places, uh, um, this one's a good example. It's owned by, uh, or it's leased by my local angling club, Luton and District, who I'm a member of. And day tickets are available for an adult. Uh, I think they're six pounds, which is very reasonable. Um, but the main point of coming to them is, one, they're full of fish, and they respond really well to this method. Because the whip is such a simple, simple method. Everybody should have a whip. And virtually all the top anglers will have a whip um, because they are very good at catching small fish, especially when there's a lot of them about. Getting bites and I'm missing them. Let's have a look at the maggot. See, he's not moving, so just change him over. Anyway, um, they're also, as far as waterways go, pretty safe places. I mean, I'm fishing about, I don't know, eight feet or nine feet out from the bank, I suppose, and the water depth is, well, it's less than a metre, um, and in the edge, they're very shallow. Um, so as far as waterways goes, they're pretty safe for kids and juniors of all ages. If not every canal, admittedly, but this canal is a fairly typical narrow canal. There's a, just a few inches at the very edge and then it slopes gradually out to a maximum depth, I would guess here. Four feet, four and a half feet, maybe at the very deepest. There will be odd stretches that are deeper, but to fall in deep water, uh, you'd have to be a good long distance jumper to get out there. Um, so I think generally speaking, they're pretty safe. Um, the rigs and tackle and bait required are usually pretty simple. You don't need um, a lot of expensive fancy tackle. And one of the other things that's really important about a canal is, if you can learn to catch fish from a canal, the methods you employ can be transferred to anywhere, whether it's a river, a lake, or whatever. Um, it's basically learning how to catch fish. And the best way to learn how to catch fish is to catch fish. Too many people say, oh, fishing's boring because they don't catch anything. They think it's just some idiot sitting there watching a motionless float. And yet yeah, sometimes it can be. But um, if you follow the simple basic methods like we're fishing today, as you can see, oh, and what have we got this time? I have a little minute roach, and it's a disgorger job. So, um, I think it's important for people to start off in waters where they're actually going to catch fish. Um, I don't agree with this philosophy of going all out carp fishing for big fish, etc. I think you need to learn the basics. Um, fishing like this is fishing at its most simple. It's usually, unless you're in an urban canal, a very peaceful place to be. I'm out here in the Bedfordshire countryside, it's beautiful. Uh, there will no doubt be some aeroplanes coming over, but uh, there's a distant railway about a mile away I can hear. Don't know if the mic's picking it up, but it's uh, generally speaking a pretty nice place to be. And like I say, what better place to learn? Uh, it's cheap to fish. My bait bill today, well, a total of a pint of maggots, half a pint of each. In fact, I have even got half a pint of each. And another fish, what have we got this time? Slightly bigger, oh, nice roach. Um, 
50 pence worth if I'm being generous of ground bait plus the petrol to and from here where I'm a clocked it out of here as a matter of interest it's about 12 miles as the crow flies and about 18 via the roads um, slightly longer because they've opened a new uh, bypass which reduces journey time but increases its length so there and back a gallon of petrol uh, what's that now about six pounds so I reckon for a ten pounds you can have a whole day's fishing now I know people say oh I can go to a fishery and the day ticket's only seven pound uh, but by the time you factored in bait travel etc um, it's just as expensive if not a lot more so like I say I would always encourage people to start doing this form of fishing whether it's on a canal or a river stream lake pond whatever um, I've done one video a mile or so for, from here using uh, punched bread on the hook feeding liquidized bread for those who are a bit squeamish about maggots and worms and things and there's plenty of people will be put off fishing uh, because they don't want to oh bump that one don't want to handle worms and maggots ah and the maggots turned over on the hook so um you don't have to have maggots like i say if you look at the other video bread punch was very successful and very cheap not messy or anything no handling maggots so moving on what can we expect to catch well mostly i'll be honest it's small fish it's uh mostly gudgeon roach small bream what we call skimmers uh small hybrids perch but here's the thing there are some very large fish in this canal uh, my best roach is one pound 12 ounces which is uh, a very respectable roach anywhere in the country um, that's a good fish a very good fish a lot of anglers will go their whole life without catching one that big perch I know go to an excess of four pounds here I took a beginner here fishing a couple of years ago and I think his second session using the uh, baits and tactics I showed him on a whip no actually I lie he was on a short pole he had a three pound one ounce perch now that's a big fish what else um, there's carp now uh, there's big carp in here I've had them to a middle 20s I guess was my biggest but they go a lot bigger than that um, in some sections of the canal they go to 40 pounds and that's proven they've been weighed witnessed the photographs are around for people who don't believe pike uh, there's a quite a large head of small pike surprisingly um, and I don't doubt if you put the time and effort in you could get a big one and I know in some sections they've had them to well over 20 pounds which is a very big fish by any standards anywhere there are enormous eels uh, a reasonably local angler called Bob Church um, got well known um, for catching big eels on here and I believe they've had them to seven pounds which is an absolute monster some sections contain chub uh, but they tend to be very localized there are odd tench rudd and crucians but they are only odd fish in here um, so generally speaking roach gudgeon perch that sort of thing there's some bleak in here I believe um, if I hook a big fish well on this gear I might get just get lucky and get them out but if I hook a carp unless it's a baby one that, that'll be me gone but uh, I'm not fishing for carp. I will do a carp fishing video on here sooner or later when I get the time. Um, so let's just settle down. Another boat coming. I don't know if the video is picking it up, but uh, 
I will catch, I hope. At the moment, it's just gudging with a couple of roach, but I've only been fishing five minutes. So give it time. Don't let the procession of boats put you off. They certainly don't put the fish off. Um, and the boats are the reason this canal's here, obviously. It used to be the M1 of Britain. All our heavy goods were hauled up and down here from uh, the Midlands and further north to London, further south, obviously, and uh, from there abroad. Um, so they are a very important part of our heritage. Uh, and I'm Oh, that was a better fish, and I'm glad that uh, we have access to them. Uh, one peculiarity of canals that you'll notice is that sometimes the water sits still, sometimes it toes to the left, sometimes it toes to the right, and that will vary due to movement of boats through the locks. Every time a boat goes through the lock, the water will change direction. But anyway, let's crack on with the fishing, see what we can get. Follow the same routine out over the baited area. No more than half a dozen maggots. Now the boat's gone past peace and tranquility. The canal is towing very slightly to the left at the moment, but when the lock gates open, that will no doubt change. When the flood goes to the left, keep the rod to the right. When the flood goes to the right, like it's just started then, and I've got a bite straight, oh, and it's fallen off. It's only a gudging. Um, when the flood goes to the right, move the rod to the left. All you want to try and do is keep a reasonably direct line between the rod tip, or in this case, the whip tip, and the float, so you can react to a bite quickly. Because some of the bites can be quite tentative. Some will just pull a float under and out of sight. Others are quite gentle. One of the main reasons it's important to uh, what we call dotting the float down, so you have literally a dot above the surface. I would say you're aiming for an absolute maximum of a centimetre, but five millimetres is probably better. They can be quite shy. Canals just stop dead. Let's get out again. A few maggots. This is the secret to fishing, is feeding and presentation. Keep the bait going in in small quantities. Do not throw large handfuls. That can be the kiss of death. Just keep it very small quantities going in. Keep control of your rig. And you do need to use fairly small hooks. Uh, I think the biggest I would use on here other than for carpal pike, is a size 10 in quite a fine wire for the perch when I was using lobworms. Um, but normally, nothing bigger than a 16. And usually I would err on the side of an 18, 20 or 22. As I said before, the bigger the number, the smaller the hook. Now, people might think that's ridiculous, um, but it's not. It's what you need to catch fish. And I'm also constantly just trying to make these fish take the bait. I'm casting, I'm throwing my loose fed maggots in the same area, but I'm casting in and around that area. 
in an effort to find the fish because sometimes they'll sit just off where you're feeding but I keep feeding in the same place and it's often the better quality fish that will uh, hold back all people coming down the towpath obviously been enjoying walking their dog one reason to always have your tackle out the way because sometimes you get mountain bikers down here will tear down here hello baby hello hello so remember the canal is for everybody it's not just for the boaters it's not just for the fishermen don't curse other users. If we didn't have users, we wouldn't have a canal. Now the level of the canal has dropped very slightly. I can see on the far bank, so I'm just going to move the float down very slightly, just half an inch. Here comes a, a couple enjoying a, a paddle up the river in an absolutely beautiful wooden canoe. And you don't see many of them these days. They're nearly all... With an engine, I think. Yeah. They're normally made out of fiberglass or plastic these days. But that's obviously a cross. I hope so, mate. I hope so. On the bailiff. Oh, right, yes. Uh, hang on a minute. Let me just find my ticket. You can take a video of it. Oh well, well if you like, if you come around this side. Oh. Yeah. And uh, this is the bailiff for Luton and District, so I better just put my whip down and show him my club ticket. Oh, you got a club ticket? Oh yes. Sorry. Thank you very much. Got your picture in it? Probably have. Can't we say that ugly face? There aren't many that ugly in here. You know, I always joke and I go, I go, that must have been taken 20 years ago. Oh, well, it's not in my case. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you said this. It doesn't teach them anything. I've just said on my, this video that the skills you learn on a canal here can be transferred anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can take the skills of e even this, which is like, I deliberately went out and bought a eight pound fifty whip with a rig on it and just showing people how much they can catch um, because you don't need a lot of fancy gear I mean I've, my bait bill today is less than a fiver and that's probably enough for two or three trips because I'm an expert canal fisherman it means I can fish anywhere because the skills I learned from, from fishing from the canal, the canal from when I was a teenager I can fish on rivers, lakes, you name it it's just the same what have we got? Is that a stripey? Is he big enough? Oh, he's small enough to lift. Um, yeah, I, I think... It, and also, you learn, you learn a lot in the canal because you're getting bites, so it's, you can actually learn a lot quicker because you're getting bites all the time. The, I made that exact point at the start of the video, mate. If you mate. go to lakes or if you go to the rivers sometimes, you know, you're not getting enough bites to learn anything. I, I, I said exactly that, I said, and the important thing about it is people don't learn how to fish because they're not catching fish. And all right, they're, they're not all small fish in here. I know I've had some very big fish out of here, but there's enough bites from like little fish to yep. teach you about feeding, presentation. Everything. And I mean, this is a really basic, it's a shop bought rig uh, a really cheap glass pole uh, whip, you know. All the thing I've done to it is I've glued, cut the eye off and glued a stompho on and showed them on video how to do that. It's a lovely day for a walk. Well, after an interesting chat with the bailiff who's uh, said exactly what I've said about how great these places are, for people to learn to fish on. Uh, while I've been talking to him, I was steadily catching, and uh, I'm gonna continue, I hope, on that vein. I'd hope, like to see some better quality fish, but at the moment, it's a procession of, uh, had one perch, some roach, plenty of gudgeon, and what have I got here? This feels like a roach. Yep, 
here we go. Not big, but what beautiful little fish. How could anybody not enjoy catching these? And I think if you're a true fisherman, it doesn't really matter what size the fish are. I think all that matters is the beauty of catching fish. A lot of guys uh, poo poo small fish, but I don't think you should. I think you should accept them for what they are and enjoy catching them. I certainly do, and all I fish for big fish quite a lot. When I'm not videoing, when I get the time. But I get a lot of pleasure out of this kind of fishing. So we're just going to crack on and see what we can get. I might turn the camera off in a bit to save the battery because I can't afford a spare battery for the camera. So I've only got the one with me. As I'm getting plenty of bites. Canal's dead still at the moment. But that won't last long. So, I've been fishing away steadily for about an hour now. I've probably got about 30 fish, nothing huge. Um, I've had a few perch. Um, a small hybrid, some roach, loads of gudgeon. Um, and I'm just going to carry on, hopefully catching. And the canal stops towing. Or should I say flowing at the moment. Um, I might risk putting another small ball of ground bait in. Just to see if I can get some more better quality fish in my swim. I'm going to wait till the canal. What have we got here? Uh -huh, another little stripey. Caught quite a few of these stripies now, including one of about six ounces. That'll put up a rare little scrap on my whip. So. Yeah, just keep plodding away, enjoying myself. On days like today, with a a bit of a skimming wind, uh, a short pole would be probably more effective because you could control the float better, but that will be the subject for an upcoming video very soon. I've already done an introduction to the short pole and I should be following it up with the short pole on the canal for days just like today when there's a bit of a wind and it's difficult to keep the float still at the moment the breeze has picked up and i'm having a job holding my float in a relatively stable position because if it's being blown along the fish will suddenly see the bait skidding along the bottom and they know that's not right uh, well another small perch all welcome though and as per usual with small perch, he needs a disgorge. Oh no, he doesn't. He's just popped in there. And interestingly enough, his throat is stuffed full of maggots. When I unhooked him, he had three or four white maggots in his mouth. Essence of greed, small perch. They're like a a glutton in a sweet shop. Well, I've been fishing for about an hour and three quarters now, so pretty much time for me to uh, call it a day. 
but I'm going to have the last cast, famous last cast again, and then uh, I'll pull out the net and show you what we've managed to catch. Nothing huge today, but uh, a pretty steady uh, procession of uh, small fish. I've had to use the landing net a couple of times for uh, some slightly better perch and uh, roach, but nothing big, but very, very enjoyable all the same. And I, well, if I've used a quarter of a pint of bait, that's probably being generous. Um, if I had more time here, I could uh, probably catch quite a few more, but uh, life dictates that I can't. So in a minute, I hope to get you one last fish or whatever to show you. Oh, and I missed that one. And the other one, that was a perch. And uh, and I guess it will be haul and keep net time out. I've kept up that steady regime of feeding every chuck. I think in total now I've fed, what, three balls of ground bait and they've only been small ones. So, I mean, you know, if I hold the thing up, I haven't used much ground bait either. So, uh, very cheap day. I hope you uh, have enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. And I've hoped you picked up a few uh, pointers and tips along the way. When I get home, I'll download it and see if I can get it onto YouTube without messing it up. Because I'm computer illiterate, I find that difficult. So it's a bit of a struggle. But anyway, in just a minute or so, I will uh, lift the net out. I'm still getting bites steadily, not as many as I would like, but I'm still getting them. So, at the end of a very enjoyable couple of hours fishing, we got quite a net full of fish, all on a three metre whip. Biggest fish, probably this perch. Uh, there's a, a couple of them that size. Uh, a small skimmer, some roach, loads of gudging. So there you have simple bait, simple method, simple tackle. That's easy fishing for you. So until next time, bye for now.